All right, folks. Well, we're most of the way in our process of going from finite or non-deterministic or blah, blah, from regular expressions to a minimized finite automata. Uh, we just need to take care of the minimization part. So we're assuming that we've been given a deterministic machine, but it's not necessarily minimal. So there might be extra states that have equivalent behavior. So, you know, state Q3 and Q17 actually behave identically across all inputs. So they can be regarded as an identical state and collapsed or an equivalent state and collapsed together. So what we want is an algorithm that takes the set of all the different states in the finite machine and just starts partitioning them based on whether they're different or not. Whether if you've got states Q1 and Q2, is there some set of input that makes them do different things, that makes one of them accept and the other one not? So what we're going to do is, in the beginning, we'll just split the, the states into accept states and non-accept states, since clearly they're different. And then we'll start saying, okay, well, for the accept states, is there some, if we take any, uh, is there some input value that makes some of them stay in accept and some of them not? In that case, we can split those into different behavior. And similarly, we'll look at those non-accepting states and say, okay, well, is there some input where for some of the states it stays non-accepting, but for other ones it goes to accept? And so we might wind up with these four different sets now. And then we'll go through each of those and say, okay, well, for that first set, is there some input that takes some of them to one of our other sets, but others not? Or, take, or leaves some of them in our current set, but others not. So we just look for ways that we can keep breaking these sets of states up into smaller and smaller sets, where we know that you know if they're in different sets, they're not equivalent states. And we'll just keep that process going until we can't split things up anymore. And then we'll say, okay, well, everything that's left in any given set, they're all equivalent to each other. So that's the idea. So we'll walk through that process and maybe do an example or two. So again, in the beginning, we'll split into just accept and non-accept. And then we'll repeatedly, for each of the different sets that we've got, pick an input character and see if all of the states on that input, all of the states in your set on that input character take you to the same subset, to the same collection of states. And if they don't, then we can split it up. So the algorithm is in the beginning, we'll divide it up into accept states and non-accept states. And what I'm gonna do is keep track of two things, uh, current and, and our P. And we can sort of think of this as the, uh, the old set of states and the new set of states that we're building. Or actually, we're gonna do it the other way around in here. We'll set P to remember the old set of states and we'll build up a new one. And we're just going to keep doing this over and over and over again until it doesn't change, until we hit a point where the old and the current are the same, meaning we couldn't partition any further. So that's all our repeat loop is doing here. And then in the body, so on each pass, we'll say, okay, let's go through each of the sets that we have right now and see if there's some way we can split it further. And if it is, we'll remember the, that we've split it up. And if not, we'll remember that it stayed the same, basically. And so we're just going to keep going through over and over and over again. And it's this split that's going to go through and look at the set of states and our set of input characters and see if we can find a way to distinguish between some of the sets and others. So that split function is saying for each input character C, go through each state in our set S and say, okay, do some of them take us on, do some of those states on C lead us to a different partition than others. You know, so try the first one. Uh, the first state in S on C takes us to a state in, you know, partition seven or whatever it might be. And then just see if all of the others take you to seven as well or not. And if not, then we've got a way of saying, okay, well, these states are different than these other ones. And you can split your setup. So this is, and if you go through all of the characters, and there's nothing in there that distinguishes between one state and the other, then, you know, we're, we're done for now and move on. So, for our example, we'll take this as our starting machine. Um, we start in state n0, on a 0 we go to n1, and then on a 0 we go to n2, 
and a 1 will take a stand 4, or a 1 will take a stand 3, and a 1 will take a stand 5. So really, <laughs> all this DFA is doing is recognizing either 0, 0, 1 or 0, 1, 1, right? Those are the only two strings it accepts. And we'll see if this is minimal form or not. So again, the first thing we do is split it up into two sets, the non-accepting ones, 0, 1, 2, and 3, and the accepting ones, 4 and 5. So on our first pass through the repeat loop, we'll go through and see if we can split 0, 1, 2, 3 up, or to see if we can split 4, 5 up, or both. So we'll try split on that first one to see if we can break it down any further. further. And, ooh, that's actually an error. On input 1, you know, let's go back and take a look at our machine. On an input 1, 2 and 3 take us to one of those accept states. But 0 and 1 do not. So 0 and 0 and N1 can be distinguished from N2 and N3. So that, uh, that input 0 there is a typo. That should be an input 1. So on input 1, N2 and N3 go to a different partition than N0 and N1. So we can split those up. So now we've got N0, N1 as one set, N2, N3 as another set. And we'll see if we can split up 4 or 5 any further. Now, if we take a look at 4 or 5, it doesn't matter if we give them a 0 or if we give them a 1, they're each going to do exactly the same thing. right? Neither of them is going to accept. So there's no differences we can find there. So at the moment, you know, after our first pass, we've got these three sets, N0, N1, N2, N3, and N4, N5. But we made some changes, so we've got to go through the repeat loop one more time to see if we can find any other changes. So on our second pass, we'll see if we can split N0 and N1 up any further. So if we take a look, if we give N0 a 0, it gives us an N1, so it stays in this N0, N1 pair. But if we give N1 a 0, it leaves and goes to that N2, N3 pair. So N0, N1, and N1 can be distinguished from one another. So we can split that up into two. So we've got N0, N1. Now, if we try a split on N2, N3, um, they both do exactly the same thing on 1, and they both do exactly the same thing on a 0. Right? On a 0, they reject, and on a 1, they go to our N4, 5 combination. So we can't sh split those up any further. And as we saw before, N4, N5, we can't really do anything much with them either. So we wind up with our N0 now, N1, N2, 3, and N4, 5. And if we go back and make another pass through this, we'll see that none of this changes, right? Obviously, we can't break N0 up in any further, and we can't break N1 up any further. And again, we've seen that N2, N3 do the same thing, and N4, N5 do the same thing. So this is our final set of four states. We've got N0 and N1 stay as states on their own. N2 and N3 we merge, and N4 and N5 we merge, which gives us our N0 on a 0 takes us to N1, and N1 on either a 0 or a 1 takes us to N2, 3. And N2, 3 on a 1 takes us to N4, 5. And so we come up with our minimized finite automata. So let's try just one more example here. Let's start off with this is our, uh, our beginning beastie. So we'll have our starting state N0. And on an A, it takes us to N1, which is an accept state. And that one, if we keep seeing A's, we stay there. If we see an N, we go off to N2, which is also an accept. And if we keep seeing n's, we stay there. If we see an a, we go off to n3, which is also an accept. And there, if we see an n, we go back to n2. And if we see an a, we go back to n1. So here's our machine. Let's see if we can minimize it. So as always, the first thing we're going to do is split this into the non-accepting, which is just n0, and the accepting, which is these three, n1, n2, n3. So obviously N0 we can't split any further. We want to see if N1, N2, N3 can be split up. Well, if I give them an A, they stay in N1, N2, N3, right? None of these leave this little set of three on an A. None of these leave this set of three on an N. So it doesn't matter what input I give them, it's going to stay in our little cluster of three here. So I can't distinguish these three at all. So these three can be collapsed together into a single state. And so we wind up with our N0 start state on an A, takes us to our N1, N2, N3 
accept state, and as long as I keep seeing A's and N's, I stay there. All right, so this is the partition, this is our, our minimized machine. All right, so you get the idea. Obviously, it gets uh, much more tedious to work through larger examples, but we can write code to do this, right? Write code to, to go through and just check and see if we can find distinguishing sets or distinguishing values to partition our sets. All right, I will leave that there. Next time around, we'll start getting into going from our minimized finite state machine to code.